When you're in a national show in pre-judging, you get put in center. What is that like? It's unbelievable. Tip number one, I would say, is just to always keep your glutes high. You want to always maintain that arch in your glutes. So no matter where, what pose you're doing, whether it's your front pose, or you're transitioning, coming into your back pose, you always want to keep them high. You never want to drop them down because then you lose all the shape. So that's my tip number one, keep the glutes high. Yesterday was a big deal here in DFW. It was nationals. Uh, what was it like? Um, I really didn't even feel like I was competing until I was like backstage. Um, I just, it didn't feel real. This prep had been so rough. Um, just life and momming and work. And so when it finally came, I was just like, oh, wow, it's here. And it's a big show. Um, but my best friend, Marissa, was my stage mom. And she was amazing she was my chauffeur she was my um helping me with all my stuff backstage didn't let me hold a thing so she made things really really simple and fun and it was she was just really blessing to have back there but yeah it was just surreal being back there and then getting on stage I hadn't been on stage in over a year so I just really craved the competition you know yeah, uh, two things. One, Marissa is downstairs. Yes. We tried to get her to come up. Marissa, why? <laughs> I know. Why, Marissa? <laughs> How long have you all been friends and, and talk more about her? Um, So I met her when I was pregnant in 2021. I went to go see her compete at, what show was it? I want to say it was the Battle of Texas. She won her class um, and she looked really, really good. And then we just became friends. I ended up joining her team for a little bit and... We just clicked like we're both moms, you know, both have two kids that are pretty young. Um, and I don't know, there's just certain people that you meet in your life that you just know are going to be your friend forever. And she's like a sister to me that I never had. And we've been through a lot of just life together um, in terms of like, you know, big moments, you know, and, and confided in each other. And yeah, she's just like my soul sister. Do you all live in the same city? No. <laughs> No, but when you become a when you become a mom, it's kind of like distance doesn't matter. Like she's she's a mom, I'm a mom. We have the same daily struggles, both you know hardworking people, and so we can confide in each other and understand each other in a way that like distance doesn't really matter. That's really cool. Yeah, Marissa, mm -hmm. well she's done. amazing. <laughs> yep. You said you didn't feel like you were competing until you were backstage. Just being around these other national competitors does that give you the feel? I mean. So, I, saw, I saw some pictures and there's some pretty amazing people in bikini. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, and I knew it was going to be that way. Like, I, this is my third national show. So my first national show, I got fourth place. And then my second national show, there was this pressure to like, okay, I have to do better than fourth, right? Like, I don't, I don't want to backslide. And I ended up getting sixth. And so with this show, I was just like, you know what? No expectations. Just be happy with the package that you're bringing. It's the best you've ever looked. That's all you can do. You can't control what shows up. There's some, you know, freak beast from Wisconsin that, you know, it doesn't have an Instagram and she just decides to show up. Like, I can't control that. Why, why Wisconsin? And it's just a random state. <laughs> I was silly that the people backstage and they were just like, they thought it was funny too. But yeah, like, you just really can't control what shows up. You can't really control what the judges want either. Um, what do you think um, for this show they were looking for? You know, I think they're they're trying to make that statement of like not going too hard. Yeah, um, I think like where my look was good was that I I was a good balance of like muscle density and maturity without being like overly striated or overly hard. So I think that they've been trying to push that message out for a little bit. And so if you notice, a lot of the class winners are definitely developed, you know, um, but not overly conditioned, not grainy, not striated. So I think they were trying to, 
you know, progress that. Did you say grainy? Yeah, like the texture of your skin, like wa- like if you don't have any moisture or water in it, or if you're really dehydrated, it can uh-huh. kind of give a grainy texture to your skin instead uh-huh. of like a smooth, like round kind of bubbly muscle. I feel like an amateur. I've never heard that before. <laughs> but of course, density and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what they're they're kind of looking for, like a, a healthy, you know, kind of look. You know, the the striated and like you know the the kind of harder look that's more for like you know your figure your figure girls or and, and above. But for a bikini, they want to keep it. A little bit more i don't want to say feminine because figures feminine too but i think just a little bit girl on the beach type mm-hmm. you know look <laughs> this is probably a dumb question but and you probably weren't even looking but maybe you were when you saw the people in your class you kind of knew you're like, yeah, i'm gonna win this. oh no never <laughs> never do i ever 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 go into a show thinking that i have it and but being backstage, like all I can see is like, oh my god, her delts are amazing. Oh my god, her glutes are amazing. How many like, people were in your class? Twenty-seven. Oh wow. Yeah, it was actually that was one of the smaller glutes. I was so glad that they measured my height right because I'm five five and a quarter. But if you don't get that quarter and you measure me at five five, then I get put in class E, and that class had thirty-seven girls. So I was very glad that I was. In Have that you ever class. been measured five five before? Mm-hmm. I me- I got measured five five at my last show. That my last national show, I want to, I should say. You got to wear thicker socks or something. You just got to stand up, like not over arch. You have to just stand up straight and not. Tra- you know, I think a lot of people do like this when they're trying to stand up straight, and they're like, no, just stand up nice and tall, don't arch the back, because I think that's what got me in classy last time. Interesting. Yeah. Were there any moments? I mean, I didn't see uh, prejudging. Uh, any moments where they put like two or three of y'all and moved y'all around a lot, or? So I was when they finally like- first one that they moved. Um, I think they moved me once to like a third or fourth spot and then they moved me again to center. And then at that point I was like, just don't call my number. Please don't call my number. Let me just stay here. Um, and they were moving, you know, some people around me and, um, they switched me and I thought what I thought was going to be the, the second place girl, she actually ended up getting third and I was devastated because she was so nice. And I was so scared when I got off stage cause I could hear them talking, um, when they did my routine. Mm. And I was, I thought they were, I thought they were shaking their heads and I thought they were saying something about my shoulder. So I got off the stage kind of defeated. I was like, oh man, maybe my shoulders were too hard or like maybe I wasn't. And I was telling, um, her name was um, Jess. I was telling her uh, um, that I was a little, you know, disappointed. I was like, I don't think they were happy with me. And she was like, no, just calm down. You don't know what they're saying. You don't know who they were talking about. I was like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> and then when they pulled everybody for the top five, I was like, oh, I'm in the top five. And and then when I, they did the compar- comparisons and I was in the center, I was like, I think I was center. I hope I'm center. But yeah, so it wasn't, I was in my head for a little bit. And I, there were some really nice girls back there that were like, just breathe. It's okay. You don't know how it's going to play out. So yeah, there was a really great group of girls. When you're at a national show in pre-judging, you get put in center. What is that like? It was unbelievable i was just so happy this this getting to that stage one was just like a journey on its own just trying to get there um i wouldn't have got there without marissa she literally drove from houston to san antonio picked me up and drove over here and so just just getting there was a a accomplishment in itself and then being standing in the center stage and like all that work and all that support that i've had was worth it and like feeling like i i finally accomplished something that i've been dreaming about for like uh like four or five years now it it felt so good every now and then we see uh people i don't know why i'm asking this question right now but here i go um <laughs> we they turn pro and then they don't do any pro shows do you right. see yourself doing some shows absolutely like i i didn't think you're you're doing a, yourself a disservice and you're doing yourself a disservice to, or you're doing a disservice to all the people that you competed with but in my opinion when you don't use your pro card you know what i mean like it might be the last first place i ever get or you know and as a pro you know i might i might end up dead last at my, my next show i don't know or the show's following but to me it's like I just got, if you follow basketball or whatever, like now I get to play next to like, I'm from San Antonio. So like Tony Parker, you know, people that like I've been idolizing, you know, for the past, you know, five years, like I get to just stand on stage with them. I don't even care if I get dead last, just to be able to share the stage with them and be able to be compared to them. Like, yeah, I'm definitely going to compete. I just, I don't know when, probably I'm guessing in July. 
I don't know, just spitballing. I really like Republic of Texas, so that might be my first one. I don't mm. know. But um, yeah, no, I'm absolutely, I don't care if I get dead last. Like, I, I definitely want to step on stage as a pro. Because, like, I, all those other girls over in my class wanted that pro card. They want to step on stage. Like, you know, I can't, I can't take a pro card and just hold on to it and not use it. Mm hmm. Are there any, um, you know, three, four top Olympian bikinis that you look up to? Um, obviously, I love Jennifer Dory, but I love Angelica Teixeira. She's um, from here, right? Yeah. She was at my show of champions overall win. And I loved her before when um, from when she won the Olympia those two years and seeing her being a great ambassador to sport. But I remember when I was at show of champions, I won the overall and I was like, she gets to hand me my award oh my god like miss olympia you know and then we just became like such great friends and we we're able to become close when um she was pregnant and her going through motherhood and like talking about you know her new life as like a mom and she's she's just such a great person um so she, i obviously love her very much too um and then i don't know there's so many wonderful bikini pros i i'm really close to ariel barley too i think she's so sweet um i know she's not like you know, it's a big, big, big name, but she's an Olympian and she's just like, uh, we connected over Instagram and she's just the sweetest. Like, she doesn't care. Like, a lot, sometimes, you know, you get those pros that don't want to talk to us lowly amateurs, but Ariel Barley was like, just always so supportive. Like, and I was like, you're just so nice. Like, you're a pro, you're Ariel Barley and you're talking to me and telling me like, I'm, I'm great. So she's really sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you just competed yesterday and you're sitting here uh, in studio. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're going to hold you for one more segment. Okay. <laughs> but right now, let's go to this um, posing you did earlier, and you're going to give a posing tip. We actually pre recorded this. Let's go to that right now. Posing tip number two, it's gonna sound cliche, but be yourself. When you look at other people pose, what they're doing works for them because they're them. You have to find what works for you. If your personality is bubbly, if your personality is sassy, if your personality likes to be a little spicy, a little sexy, you gotta find what works for you. You can't look at somebody else and think, oh, that looks so great on them, it's gonna look great on me. No, you gotta find what works for you, works, works for your body type, and yeah, just be you. about your service to this country um uh let's go into that uh you elaborate take it take it away okay so after my son um i was kind of not really knowing what i wanted to do um professionally and uh i decided to join the military i joined the army as a physical therapy tech and i honestly love my job and so i left um to basic training right after my son turned one I went through AIT, which is like training for your job, your MOS. Um, I did that for about nine months. So I wasn't really in, in the military for about a year after that. And now I'm a sergeant. Um, I'm the NCOIC of a clinic, and which is I just pretty much run a physical therapy clinic. Um, and I, I really enjoy it. I love I love the military. It doesn't really feel like a total army job because I, I do run a clinic. But, you know, there are moments we have to shoot. We have to you know, go on the field, all that kind of stuff. And it's a, it's, it's a good, it's a good gig. <laughs> you see a lot of typical injuries? Um, musculoskeletal. So I treat main, I've done inpatient where, you know, you see the car accidents, you see the shooting, um, like people, uh, gunshot wounds, um, burn victims, all that kind of stuff. I've, I've done that. I've done, and that's not just military. That's um, all of the San Antonio area and some of like just South Texas in general. Bamsey is one of the biggest trauma centers, especially burn trauma centers um in southern texas so force space down there too there is there's um lackland air force base as well um but yeah i'm mainly i'm stationed at fort sam so 
I've done inpatient care. Um, I've done outpatient care. I've worked with soldiers in training. Uh, BAMC is also a um, a training site for all medical MOSs, all medical jobs. So we have a lot of the um, new recruits that are are there learning their whatever their job is going to be in the medical field, um, and they get injured. You know what happens. So we'll treat them. And then at my clinic, it's an outpatient clinic, and I treat active duty family members and retirees. Mm -hmm. And it's just a musculoskeletal or post um, post surgical, primarily. Well, what about your family? Do you have, you have siblings? I have one brother. He's adopted, recently married. Really? Yeah. He's super cool. He's eight years younger than me. He's actually thinking about joining the military too. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably got an interesting story. Yeah, he, yeah he's pretty cool. Um, we yeah. adopted him when he was six. Um, and yeah, he. He had a rough time um, before we adopted him. He was That's one of- That's how it goes. Yeah, he was like a ward of the state. So his, his parents, you know, or his mother was like, had drug problems beforehand. Mm. And, you know, he had, a, he had an, he, he didn't really get a chance to eat like regularly. So when we first took him out to eat, he- How old were you? I was 13 at the time. And he ate- all the perishable parts of the burger first, so like the vegetables and the tomato, and then he just wrapped it up and saved the rest because he's so used to having to like make his meals last. Wow. So um, now he's now he's good. Now he definitely <laughs> it's but yeah, it was it was really interesting because I was blessed with the house that I had to see like a young like you know a little kid uh -huh. like five or six years old having to think like that, uh -huh. you know how how to make his food last. So yeah. I was, I'm really blessed to have him in my life. Really, um, I don't know why I'm thinking of this right now, but uh, here I go again. Um, adoption's expensive, isn't it? I mean, for yeah, it certainly can be. Um, I'm not exactly Maybe sure of the if number. Maybe you go through an adoption agency or something. Um, I well, through the state, it's not so bad. Like they actually give you a stipend um, monthly for to, because now you're taking kind of a burden off the state and you're taking care of you know a, a child that was the ward of the state. So they actually give you a little bit of money to help you with that. And my brother got free tuition to college um, because he is adopted. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's one of the benefits that people really don't think about. At least you don't have to pay for college. Like I know I'm going to have to pay for my kids mm -hmm. or give them my GI Bill. <laughs> I want to say November uh, last month was Adoption Awareness Month. It, uh, yeah. 100% <laughs> sure. Yeah? yeah? Oh, well. Timely conversation. That is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Um, yeah, we're so we're. I'm still thinking about Marissa. We're seven floors up in this tower right now. Marissa's in the car. Why is this happening? Why is she in the car, <laughs> dude? I don't know. This podcast would be so much more fun with Marissa. <laughs> she's like, she's hilarious, man. Maybe I should get her up here <laughs> somehow. Um, well, um, what are you gonna do for Christmas? What are we gonna do for Christmas? Um, every year I take my kids to the Polar Express, so we'll probably take them down there. San Antonio. Um, no, like I've, we've driven to Palestine, Texas before, which is like five hours away just because I saw it on Instagram and I was like, oh, they would love that. So we drove there one year and then they have one in like the Galveston area. So we, we went there and mm -hmm. so we checked out the different ones. But yeah, I, my kids love that movie and I love seeing like their faces light up when they when they have like an animated thing. What? The, the Polar Express? Yeah. Yeah, it's animated. But like. Is it with Tom Hanks or something? Yeah, oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. Tom Hanks, I've never like, seen it. No, it's it's okay. So when it first came out, I thought it looked kind of creepy. Like the animation yes. was kind of like yes. weird, you know. Um, so I really didn't love it, but my my son loved it, and because my son loved it, my daughter loved it. So now they love it, and you know they love the whole like getting the ticket and getting the little. I mean, if you haven't seen it, so you wouldn't know. But <laughs> but they think it's they they think it's really cute, like the jingle bells that Santa gives the little kids. Man. Uh... <laughs> I'm a huge Tom Hanks fan. Does I he love do the, the voice, voice too. He the yeah, voice. he does the voice of like three of the characters. Dude, I went dark last night. I watched The Da Vinci Code. Oh, wow, you did. <laughs> did you see him? I've like seen it, but like a long time ago. I because it's, it's not one of those movies that you rewatch. Don't watch The Da Vinci Code. Just... It's not a, it's not really, yeah, it's like a one and done. I never <laughs> probably need to watch this again. I'm surprised you did. <laughs> We've seen you pose two times already, but I just realized we need to go to another segment because. We, this is posing three. We need to post three times. Yeah. Well, let's jump to that real quick. Um, your third time posing, then we'll come back with you, keep you for another segment. So let's let's go to that right now.
posing tip number three, and this is more about when you're on stage. Make sure you're always posing towards the judges. So if you are on the end of the stage and your judges are obviously in the center, you're gonna wanna angle yourself towards those judges. So never like stand just straight on. If you're on the end, you want the judges to see you. So make sure that you're giving them your front pose and not your side pose. Going into uh, your pro show, which uh, will be obviously later down the road, uh, what do you think you need to improve on, if anything? Um, so I was lucky enough to run into Freddie after the show and he was talking to Tyler and um, Freddie was like, hey, do you think you can give one of my good friends like some feedback? She just got a pro card. And Tyler told me, um, obviously, congratulations. He told me I was second overall. Um, he said, I'm ready to do a show if I wanted to, but if I want to do well, he said, upper and outer glute and just like building it a little bit more. And that's pretty much it. So just uh, working on upper outer glutes, that's my main goal. He said the conditioning was on point, so. Yeah, just not too not too many big changes, but I could kind of tell. Like when I look at the pictures, I'm like, oh yeah, I need, I can see that's that needs improvement. But I brought down my legs significantly because that was like kind of a big thing. So yeah. trying to sneak into wellness. I I mean, <laughs> when the division was like developing, you know, like my legs were I'm I have bigger bikini legs, you know, but like when that division first like was integrated in, like, and they was trying to figure out what it was. Um, yeah, a lot of people thought like your wellness. I'm like, I know wellness. Like, I know what they're going for. Like the Brazilian wellness. Out, like when we brought it to the US, I was like, I know I'm not wellness. But until everybody catches up to what that that's division supposed to be, people are gonna think I'm wellness because I have big legs. What uh, division does Marissa compete in? She's bikini as well. Yeah, but she's like me. She's a dense mommy. <laughs> so are you. Yeah. Do you feel like in the sport? Um, did you fall in the sport like ten years ago? I mean, I was aware of it. Like, I've done my history on 10 years ago, but I w I got into it in 2019. Okay. Um, like, the upper glute thing is a bigger deal now. Yeah. I mean, like, glutes in general are just a thing now. Like, when you look at even the back pose has, like, you know, um, evolved to, for, to what it is now. Like, I, I used to, back then, like, they were, like, crossing their legs or doing, like, a super wide stance in their back pose. And now, like, you know, it's obviously a little bit different. Um, but that tie-in upper outer glue like it's just much different and like even from 2019 when i started to now like it's evolved significantly and if you don't keep up like it's hard to catch up because a lot of it is just density and so if you don't keep up with it you're not constantly working and building that density it's hard it's hard to like get, get your momentum back mm -hmm. yeah the routine in nationals is still a pretty short routine on stage yeah so i had to like I was watching the classes before me and I had had like some other things in my routine that I was like, you know what, let's just keep it clean. I'm just going to cut some of this out and just do. Were you like at a spin or something? Yeah, I was like, it was, I had like two hair flips in there and I was like, <laughs> one's enough. We don't need to. Um, and so, yeah, I cut it down a little bit and I actually like it because what Sandy always says is like, the longer you're on stage, the longer we have time to pick you apart. And Ooh. yeah, so you want to just do your front, back, get off stage, you know? Because if you're showing a bunch of stuff that, you know, is unnecessary or just extra, like, and it's true, like, the more you're there, the whole point is not to find the good qualities about you. It's to find your weaknesses. So the longer you're up there, the more opportunity you give them to find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you were able to make those last-minute adjustments just by watching the competitors before you well I kind of had a feeling I was like this is gonna be a sea of chicks you know like <laughs> it's just gonna be an overwhelming amount of women that you know they're I'm sure the judges are gonna get fatigued watching so I was like I'll just I'll help them out and make it a little bit shorter it's a sea of chicks <laughs> no one's ever said that on the show before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot bikinis you know you can be there for like an hour just trying to get through that division two hours mm -hmm. well um when you think that, do you think it'll be, when is, uh, we were talking off camera earlier about a show you, oh, the Republic of Texas. When yeah, is that? that one's, usually it's in July okay. in Austin. So I, I love Bernadette. She always puts on amazing shows. She was with the judge, a uh, head judge at my first show where I won overall at the Adela. And I've just always loved her ever since then. Her and Kim Shepard and Adela and Angelica, like they're, I've always loved them, especially after that show, because they they gave me the best feedback. They're so positive. They wanted me to go to nationals that year, and I was just like, 
uh what i don't even know what that is um but yeah so i love bernadette and i'd love to be honored to be in her show how many years have you lifted weights um i started lifting in 2017 about seven years mm, yeah like seven years. sweet yeah it was actually funny i was a dancer for a long time and i was a so when i right before i started lifting i was working at six flags as a dancer at the they have like shows and stuff like oh, that okay. yeah so i studied musical theater for two years um and then between go, going to school how many shows a day what do you mean oh uh, six flags yeah um well, at the time i was doing it was a halloween time so we had two a creature feature and then we had the big halloween one at the end of the night that's like a rock show so like three a day um and then after the Halloween season ended, we had the Christmas shows, and I was in a couple of those. And then between Christmas and spring break, there's like kind of a dead period because the park is, you know, not open. Hmm. So I was like, God, I need a job. And so I started working out at the gym, and somebody there was like, Oh, you look fit. And I wasn't into the gym yet. I was just into dancing, but I looked fit enough, I guess, to work at the gym. So I, I got a job at the gym selling personal training, and I was like, I should probably know what I'm doing if, um, I'm going to be selling it. So then I started doing my research and lifting weights and ended up falling in love with it. So yeah, I ended up becoming a personal trainer for a little bit as well. And I worked at an all women's gym. Well, now we know why you pose so well. Oh, because well, oh, I was a dancer? Yeah. yeah I think it, it does help a lot to have like a, a dance background mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. I think that Marissa is going to kill us because she's downstairs. Yeah. So we have to go. Okay. Yeah. I wish she had come up here. <laughs> IFBB Pro, thank you so much. Thank you. It's so cool to hear.